Day number 13 of hiking the Appalachian Trail in 100 days and I am just walking along the road right now to get back to the trailhead. Um, the guy who supposedly does these rides for this hostel never answered his phone last night. I left him a message and honestly I wasn't didn't really want to get a ride from him that much anyways just because uh, it's like 16 bucks and I'm kind of cheap like that I guess and I'm trying to not spend a ton on this trip and I already spent kind of a lot at least for me in this town so I went to the store the restaurant and asked around if anyone there could give me a ride and they said no so just walking out on this road hoping someone will pass and I can hitchhike um, it's about eight miles to the trailhead so it's kind of far but also you know a nice pretty much flat road it's gonna be pretty quick so hopefully it'll be like most two and a half hours and uh, definitely less than three and hopefully somewhere along the way I can hitchhike even if I have to walk you know an hour before someone picks me up that would be great much better than walking two and a half hours so uh, we'll see good news is I only have eight miles on the trail today there is some elevation and stuff like that but um, shouldn't be too bad hoping to get to the trailhead by like noon even if I have to walk the whole way so that's the plan so far um, not the greatest of starts to the day, but you know, we're gonna take what we're dealt and deal with it and keep on going. Happy to report that I made it back to the trail. So I ended up walking on the road about an hour, which is certainly more than I was hoping for, but eventually a guy picked me up and drove me about five more miles to the trailhead. So certainly very grateful for that. It was a big help. Um, and so have less than eight miles to the lean to tonight. So a pretty short day and it's before 11 o'clock. So it shouldn't be too bad, but there is quite a bit of elevation actually so um, will probably be a fairly slow pace but that's all right feeling good I actually didn't get uh, very great sleep at all last night maybe I'm uh, not used to a bed or what I don't know but that's all right I'm sure I'll make it and hopefully sleep better tonight all right, a few hundred more feet to get, a few hundred more feet of elevation gain, that is, to get to the top of the first bald pate uh, peak. Nice little view here as we continue up. And it's living up to the name. Getting pretty bald looking up here. So, just this uh, flat rock for the most part that you gotta kinda walk up, but it's just steep enough that it's, you gotta be careful and it's a little bit difficult to maintain your footing. All right, making it to the top of Bald Pate East Peak, I believe. Let's go take a look at the sign. Bald Pate East Peak, 3,800 feet. Uh, the West Peak, about a mile away. Lean to less than two miles away. So, pretty cool up here. I'm guessing that over there is the West Peak. Well, I don't know. 
It looks higher than this one, and I thought the West Peak was lower. So, I'm not sure, but we'll keep going and find out. So I made it to the campsite uh, just after 3 o'clock, so fairly easy day today. Well, short day. Definitely not the easiest of miles, but um, obviously only hiked hiked less than five hours. Um, those hours were fairly slow just because there was lots of elevation, but uh, still a generally easy day. So I want to show a little bit about how I do some stuff. So the first thing would be getting water. Um, so most of the shelters have some sort of water source near them, most of the shelters and campsites. And there's plenty of other water sources along the AT, so there's just a little stream here that we're going to get water from. So first I like to find a spot where uh, there's some nice flow, and this is actually perfect because um, the water is kind of coming off this ledge, and there's a nice big spot where we can get our bag in there. So I have two smart water bottles, and these are super lightweight, and uh, these are what I use for my clean filtered water. So honestly, a stream like this, I feel like you could probably just drink it straight and be fine, but um, I always filter the water just because that's what you're supposed to do, and it doesn't hurt, and it's not really that difficult. So what I have is called a Sawyer Squeeze, and it comes with these bags. So this is my dirty water bag, so I only put um, dirty water in here. It doesn't matter technically if I put clean water in. The important part is not to put, you know, unfiltered water into those uh, smart water bottles that I drink from. So what I do, I usually have it rolled up a little bit. So I'll take the lid off. And then, I don't know if this is the most, the best thing to do since technically I might get my mouth on the, an area that's contaminated. But... I basically just blow it up to open it up and let the water in and then just take it like so and hold it under the um, stream. This one's super easy since there's lots of space and it'll fill up pretty quickly within, you know, a little bit. There, it's full now. All right, so we take that. So this is the actual filter. This, uh, blue and black part here and then this green part is just a coupler that I bought online so this is the dirty end of the filter here so you just screw that on um, and then take your water bottle and screw it on to the top of this um, thread it in there and then we can just tip it upside down and it's a little bag and we squeeze it and the water comes through the filter and uh, into our water bottle. So that's the basic idea. Um, it takes, you know, I don't know, a minute or so to squeeze uh, a liter of water through this bag. So, I mean, it's not incredibly fast, like you're done in a minute, but, you know, to fill my two liters of water takes probably five minutes with all like the setup and everything so uh, it's really not bad you can see in the time we've been talking well maybe you can't see but I can see that I've got this thing about half full and the nice thing is this uh, bag is just about one of these liters so um, I can filter water and put it into these bags and then out into my water bottles. And then also I can use this uh, squeeze bag as another water storage if I'm going somewhere. Usually I just carry two liters, but if I'm going somewhere where uh, there might not be water or I just have to go a while without a water source, then I can fill this bag up as well and screw the lid on. And then I have a third liter of water I can carry. So just getting the last little bit out and just got this uh, water bottle completely full which is awesome. Usually it's uh, hard to get enough water in the bag to get the water bottle completely full but because of that nice stream I'm able to do that today. So 
that's how I filter my water. Then I'll go take this and use it to drink or cook or anything else. That's pretty much all the things I use water for is drinking and cooking. In the tent, in the shelter for the night. Uh, not much going on this evening. No one else here at the shelter. Just uh, chilled out. Tried to take a nap for a little bit. Um, got some water, cooked my dinner, and hung the bear bag. Um, today was a decent day, only eight miles of hiking, but obviously didn't start till around 1030. Just felt kind of sluggish, and uh, I think it's just partly because I didn't sleep very well at all last night, so I'm going to try to go to bed definitely before eight, and um, just try to get as much sleep as I can tomorrow, or tonight. Um, I have less than 20 miles tomorrow, but um, part of it is going through the Mahusiks and Mahusich Notch, uh, which is notoriously the hardest mile and potentially most fun, though, mile on the AT. So um, not sure how long it'll take me tomorrow, but probably try to start fairly early at least so I can get a good start. Total miles for the day was just eight, and I ended at mile 265.1. So I'm getting pretty close to the end of Maine.